Greetings! It is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It is time to continue my discussion on Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the second edition of AD&D. Well, when we last left off, we were talking about NPCs. Let's dive in a little bit more. We're pretty close to being done talking about NPCs. We're hopefully going to start finishing up now. But NPCs can have magic items. Let's start with that. The fact is your NPC might have some kind of powerful magic item. And when you ask for them to use it, well, if I ask someone to use their charges or magical abilities from that magic item that might use it up, they might look at me funny. I mean, the fact is, it's the same way that you, getting a request from an NPC as a player, would act about using this powerful magic item you have. You have to think about their reaction as they're like, why? Why would I use this? You're not convincing them to use this. It's the same way that if they're going to sell it, it's the same way if you would sell it. If I get powerful magic sword A that I can use, why would I sell it? Now, Grant, this isn't, this isn't to say that you couldn't throw money at an NPC to con convince them to sell it. You very well could. It's just most of the time, you have to treat it like you would when it comes to hacking either to get it from them, buying it, or, or having them sell it to you, or having them use it for you. Think about how your character would react to that, because otherwise you're going to get funny looks and probably them not liking you or thinking you're an idiot or something like that. They're not going to do what you want. Now, beyond the cost of hiring them and the basic stats they have, and of course how loyal they are, NPCs should have some level of personality. They, of course, could be easily run as an automaton, basically, without any kind of personality or anything if they're just relying on the stats. But when you create a vivid character that has a lot of essence to it, it sparks the imagination of your players and gets them involved. They think about this character and how he acts and feels and stuff like that. And so creating these traits, it's likes, dislikes, goals, little quirks, ambitions, desires that a character has, that an NPC has. You are sparking it to life and bringing essence to it. And that's going to be your dungeon master's job to do with these NPCs. To fire the imagination of the player. Now this isn't to say you as the DM might work on this differently. There are those DMs that could on the fly be able to come up with different characters to put them together, to throw them out and have your players interact with them and have them interesting every time. Not everyone is just born with this natural gift. You might have to basically work towards it. There are those that have trouble struggling to put these together and you might need a little extra help. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're not talking about you who could just, bam, I've got a character, I'm acting them out. We're talking about those of you that have a little more help to create these NPCs. Now, first off, a DM is basically going to want to put together a basic idea of what they want to do for each of these NPCs. Let's start with the most basic of those. Those that your characters may encounter one time and then be gone. We talked about sort of putting together these simple characters. These are walk-ons. Basically a simple role that, you're, that you will take over as a DM, you will act out for your players, and then it will be gone. A great way is to focus on something. If it's going to be a comical character, you exaggerate those comical situations he get in and the way that he acts. You're usually using the single trait to exaggerate it. You could also focus on some kind of physical trait of them. If the guy's bald, you're going to talk about how he's bald. That way, if characters should meet him again, they're going to think about, oh, it's that bald guy we talked to. Something like that is a focus for your character and brings them into this basically walk on who they may never see again. Another focus you could do is, of course, you as the DM could act something out. Like if they always kind of scratch their beard or something, you could be like, hmm, well, you know, and doing this kind of action where you're doing this in real life is focusing your players on something so that they're thinking about this character you're creating. It's adding a single focus point that's able to allow you to bloom out this character even a tiny bit to the point in time where it feels more alive. That's the point of this. Now for very important NPCs or villains, you're gonna wanna go beyond just this. For example, if you're making the character greedy, you don't just want that. That's very one note and your character that you're building here 
might be all the same as all the other greedy characters you're acting out. You're going to want to add some depth to this. For the greedy example, you might want to make it that they're fighting against their greed, that this hireling that they put on, which is always like, ha, 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 money, they're like, well, they might try to be resisting their own greed and want for money in order to help out the players if they're loyal enough. This adds a depth of character to it. The fact is, over the course of their interactions, the players should be able to ask basic questions or have questions in mind that they'll answer that will learn more about this character. Having the sort of question and answer almost about learning about the character, even if they're not asking the question directly, but basically if you're posing something about them and they're learning it, is adding into the traits of it. And therefore, because it is an important NPC, you can use each interaction that the characters, the players have with this NPC to help develop and flesh out this character as you wish. You have to pay attention to what your characters are studying and learning from this character and use that to develop it into the nature that you want, into the acting you can want, into the character you're basically playing as the DM. Now, the best characters are, of course, ones that kind of flow naturally, that you just come up with in a way that feels natural, you throw it together. But the fact is, this way of doing it can cause some problems, as I'm just sort of flowing out this NPC. If something happened that I'd written in the backstory or in part of the adventure that conflicts with the way I'm building it, that can cause interference. Basically, I'm, as I have built the background of the character, I may have to go back and adapt that background as I want. Now, an easy way of thinking about this is you could sort of throw together something ahead of time. This might help you out, giving you some ideas of what you're going to be doing with this character, that when you come to the adventure, you're ready to throw it together and have your characters, your players, encounter it and act accordingly. The book provides a chart of basically a number of traits about the character. Now these traits here, you of course could roll completely on them. You could also choose ones and then maybe roll subsets of these traits in order to help develop your character. You might roll for one type of personality trait and then basically break down and say this is the sub trait. The thing about rolling randomly completely for this is it does have a disadvantage. You can come up with combinations which don't seem to fit together or work together as a character and make something that just as difficult to roleplay as you, the DM, or impossible to. That's why it is suggested that you don't roll everything randomly here. You maybe make a few selections and then might roll randomly for something and you could always roll again or just basically use the chart here, as I've always said before, for some kind of inspiration for when you're building these things. Choose this trait, this trait, this trait, and just choose them. You could do that. This is a way that you can look at combinations of various traits about a character and basically take these personality traits, put them together, and come up with a sample NPC. Now you have an essence of what this character is, and easily I can then pick it up and act how I think this is going to be for the character in the setting I am. I'm putting this cardboard cutout of a NPC that I have basic information out into the setting, into the interactions, and letting it evolve when it comes to interacting with my players. The point of this is to spurn on the imagination of your players, but you as the DM are going to make the decision in the end if this is playable and if you can do it, what you're putting together. You're basically preparing something ahead of time that you think you can roleplay and interact with your players. But that's it for today. I went over a little bit more about NPCs. I first talked about NPCs and their magic items and how they're treated just like players and magic items. If you as a player are going to act one way around a magic item, so is the NPC. So are they. Then I moved on to talking about NPC personality. Because you're going to want your NPCs to have personality. You're going to want to make them people. People that you're wanting to interact with, which you learn and enjoy things with, that you have these relationships with maybe small ones that are one shot that you just sort of run into and then they're done. Others that they might meet them multiple times and develop a little bit between them. Basically coming up with some basics and then bringing them in is a good way that you as a dungeon master, regardless of your skill at on the fly, can have. Maybe you're not good on the fly when it comes to NPCs. Prepare a little ahead of time. It will help you greatly. When you have an idea of where to start with, it always helps. You have an idea which you can work off of and evolve the character as your story sees fit. 
In the next episode, we're going to talk about some other traits of NPCs and then morale when it comes to NPCs. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows support the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you could always check out my Patreon. Link description below. There's some great rewards there. It helps to grow and improve the channel and the empire. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.